Guys, welcome to PlayStation News, Rumors and Leaks. We have some interesting news to discuss in today's video, including Ermin Hulse taking a trip to visit Kojima Productions, the GTA trailer making gaming history, rumors of Red Dead Redemption 3, and a Sony first party studio on the verge of catastrophic failure. Guys, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button, strap yourselves in, and let's get cracking. So starting off with uh, Herman Holst, Sony's head of PlayStation Studios. He's revealed on Twitter that he recently visited Kojima Productions in Japan and posted a snap of him alongside Hideo Kojima. Kojima-san is currently working on Death Stranding 2 for the PS5, although the game hasn't been seen for quite some time, with Holst having recently visited the game's studio. Let's hope that we may get the long-awaited update on the sequel. Death Stranding 2 was officially announced at the Game Awards in 2022 and heavily rumoured to be shown again at the Game Awards last week. After all, the host Jeff Keighley and Kojima have a long-standing friendship which many gamers were hoping for some kind of a follow-up to the previous Death Stranding 2 trailer shown back in 2022 and early this year Kojima revealed that he hand-picked the cast of Death Stranding 2 himself, among which includes Ellie Fanning who will play a major role in the sequel. While not a gamer herself, Fanning's fellow gaming buddies reckon that it's the best thing the actress has ever done. Disappointing to say that we didn't get anything really from the Game Awards. Kojima was there, but he was promoting OD. Um, again, not really officially confirmed which platform it's going to be on, but I think it's heavily rumored to be on the Xbox platform, but really got nothing from, um, from him about Death Stranding 2. Why do you think Herman Holst visited Kojima Studios in Japan? Was it a status update? Do you think it was to discuss where they are with the Death Stranding 2 project? I mean, typically these things could have been done over the phone, by email or on a video call, but me, I personally think that given that it's Kojima and he's being courted by Xbox Studios, I think this is Sony just showing Kojima some respect, going to see him and the Kojima Productions team personally for updates on Death Stranding 2 or perhaps another project and maybe to plan on when the game will be ready for marketing and another kind of promotional things that Sony are thinking about long term for 2024. That's my take on it. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. Moving on, the GTA 6 debut trailer has already eclipsed over 120 million views and this was within around 72 hours of it going live and if that wasn't impressive enough it's already beaten the lifetime views that GTA 5 trailer took 12 years to achieve. GTA 5's official Rockstar trailer has amassed over 100 million views over the past 12 years although 5 million of those views have only just been logged in the past few days and that's due to the hype surrounding GTA 6. And for an idea of how well the GTA 6 trailer is doing, it's already eclipsed Disney's official Frozen 2 trailer, the Joker trailer from Warner Brothers, and the Spider-Man No Way Home trailer from Sony. The GTA 6 trailer was uploaded by Rockstar Games last week, earlier than expected as it had leaked on social media. Even so, it still managed to reach over 50 million views in just over a few hours, proving yet again how popular the GTA brand actually is. Mike York, a former animator with Rockstar Games, has claimed that the GTA trailer 6 wasn't dazzling you with flashy cinematics, it's actually going to look that good when it drops in 2025. Speaking on his YouTube channel, York, who has worked on GTA 5 and Red Dead Redemption 2 with Rockstar, took the time to comment on the GTA 6 trailer screen by screen, talking how the developer is pushing consoles and the hardware to the limit with their level of detail. He goes on to say, I'm really impressed with how far they're bringing the graphics for an in-game kind of version of this. A lot of the times you see cinematics being used and this is not what they've done. When you play this game, it's really going to look like this. The trailer confirms a Vice City setting and the action will focus on criminal Lucia and her partner. The game is scheduled for release in 2025 for consoles and no information as of yet has been given to a PC version of the game. The hype for GTA 6 is absolutely massive, probably the most anticipated game in history. The game is going to break all kinds of records when it releases. I can't wait for this to drop. I've been a, a big fan of GTA 5, although I haven't played it for a long time. GTA 6 is long overdue, so stay tuned for more information on the game in the coming months ahead. 
Guys, if you like the video so far or find the video interesting or informative, then do me a favor, hit that like and subscribe button. That will really help out the video a whole bunch. If you want to support me as a content creator, then consider becoming a channel member. I'll leave a link down below in the description on becoming a channel member. Be sure to check that out. Okay, moving on. Are we going to get a Red Dead Redemption 3 game? Well, according to one of the voice actors, that's exactly what we are going to get, but it's not going to be anytime soon. Roger Clark, the voice actor behind Arthur Morgan in the Red Dead Redemption series, reckons that Rockstar Games isn't done with its Wild West epic and feels we'll see Red Dead Redemption 3 emerge at some point down the line. Speaking on Twitter in the wake of the Grand Theft Auto 6 trailer, Clark posted the following about his thoughts on GTA and the continued success of GTA Online. He was then asked by a fan about the possibility of Red Dead Redemption 3 and here's what he had to say. It just dawned on me that there's no reason whatsoever for GTA 5 Online to slow down. Graphics still hold up. It's a completely different city. GTA 6 will not replace it. They'll both be around us for a very long time to enjoy. Rockstar is going to head further into the stratosphere with these games. I'm certain we'll see Red Dead Redemption 3 one day. When that will be, I have absolutely no idea. Don't count on Arthur's involvement either. His story has been told, I feel. Interestingly enough, back in September, it was claimed by a known insider called My Time to Shine that Red Dead Redemption 3 is indeed in development. But you should take that with a huge pinch of salt for now. For me, this is a game that will definitely happen. Right now, the team at Rockstar their focus is GTA 6, and that's it. Of course, there, there are the online elements to the GTA world, which Rockstar will start to put in place, unless they haven't already done so. All of its resource is focused on GTA. However, there will be a small team of developers working at the very conceptual stages of the Red Dead Redemption 3 game, whether it's the art, the character, whether it's the coding, whatever they're doing, they're still at the very early conceptual stages, but there will be a team working on Red Dead Redemption 3. And once the main GTA game is done and released, most of the Rockstar developers will move over to the online parts of the game for support if needed. The rest of the team will head on over to the Red Dead Redemption 3 project and they will then move into full production. GTA 6 is coming out in 2025. The rest of the Rockstar development team will be on GTA 6 and GTA 6 Online until around 2026, 2027. Red Dead 3 will start full production sometime in 2026 and probably aim for a release window of 2029 or 2020, 2030, 2029 or 2030. So half of the Rockstar team on GTA 6 Online and the other half developing Red Dead Redemption 3. So still a long, long way to go, but it will happen. It's too good a game not to happen. Moving on to our final piece and a bit of a worrying time for one of the uh, new studios at Sony. Bungie is at risk of losing its independence under Sony should Destiny 2 fail to hit revenue targets going forward, with the Sony PlayStation apparently threatening to take full control of the former Halo studio, which boasts around 1,100 people. Bungie's board of directors do include Herman Holst, Eric Lempel, Jason Jones, Louis Villegas, and Pete Parsons. However, the financials are based around Destiny 2 studio hitting its financial targets. And if they fail to do so, then Sony is poised to take over full control. Destiny 2's player count reached an all time low recently and IGN claimed that Parsons was responsible for making the call on Bungie's recent layoffs in October, as well as introducing other cost cutting measures. Morale is also said to be pretty low at Bungie lately, but senior management have reportedly showed a surprising amount of indifference or even outright flippancy or hostility regarding the situation. Unfortunately, a close source to IGN reveals that Bungie is likely to experience more layoffs if Destiny 2, the final shape doesn't meet its performance targets. The expansion is now due for release in June 2024, having originally been scheduled to drop early next year, around February 2024 time, so it's been pushed back by about four months. It is worrying that Bungie is in so much trouble due to its financials. If the board cannot deliver profitability, then the parent company, and Sony is the parent company, they own Bungie, they will take over and introduce its own board to hopefully turn things around. To be fair, it's standard business practice and similar actions or similar strategies happen in thousands of businesses across the world. The bigger concern for Sony would be 
Why is this happening? Can they do something about it to stem the tide of losing player counts? Is this savable? The other big concern for Sony surely is that Bungie was brought in to oversee the PlayStation Studio live service games, right? Made and developed by the PlayStation Studios. How do you think the other studios are now feeling knowing that their live service games are being reviewed by Bungie who are going through hell? They're going through such a difficult time. So how does that make them feel? Perhaps this is why Sony has pushed back on many of the live service games, including Naughty Dog's live service game. It does make you wonder though. Let's hope they can sort this issue out sooner rather than later, because I'm very keen to see what, um, especially Naughty Dog, have in the pipeline with their live service or multiplayer game. Okay guys, that's going to do it for the video. Thank you for watching. If you could do me a favor whilst you're here, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Leave your comments down below and I'll catch you on the next PlayStation News, Rumors and Leaks video.